Piccadilly Circus, a one-acre site of six intersecting main roads in the centre of London's West End, a place most Londoners go to at least once a week, and which every visitor to London makes for. A meeting place, a place for just standing and looking. A place which isn't particularly beautiful or ugly, for it's simply a crossroads, but a crossroads known the world over. But soon Piccadilly Circus will be changing. The entire east side of the circus will be covered at first floor level with pedestrian precincts and walkways. The traffic will pass underneath. The object is to provide space to stand and stare, which can now only safely be done in the early hours. Piccadilly is believed to have got its name from the fashionable collars or ruffs of the 17th century called Piccadills. A tailor, Robert Baker, who made his money out of Piccadills, built at the north end of the Haymarket a gaming house which later became known as Piccadilly Hall. Since then, Piccadilly, that jaunty name with a ring to it, has spread round the world and somehow has come to mean something personal to everyone, whether they're British or not, who's ever been there. Sentiment? Yes, very much so, of course. But to some people, Piccadilly is where they work, whether hosing down the streets or preparing London's busiest tube station, which is under the circus itself, for another hectic day. With more than half a million passengers passing through the station every week, the two-man night staff has plenty of cleaning to get through. Cleaning below and above. Refuse is collected through the night and early hours as office and shop cleaners arrive by all-night bus. Soon after dawn, the circus begins to move into second gear, ready for another day. Flowers arrive from Covent Garden just up the road. Shop windows are washed and polished to catch the eyes of visitors. Traffic control policemen come on duty as the traffic starts to build up. As the morning rush hour starts to get underway, thousands of people who work in offices and shops in the Piccadilly area swarm from trains at the station's four platforms to make the long haul by escalators to the upper level. From the vast circular ticket hall area of the station, just below street level, six exits lead up to the corners of the circus itself. And for these thousands of people every day, it's the way to work. For the oldest and biggest store in Piccadilly Circus, opening time is a ritual. A five-minute warning light goes out at 9 a.m. precisely, and the doors are opened. Poised in the middle of Piccadilly Circus is Eros, the famous aluminium statue by Alfred Gilbert of the God of Love. Eros gets a good cleaning every month. No statue in London is more famous or gets more attention from the pigeons. Apart from being a great crossroads for traffic and people, Piccadilly Circus is also a focal point for city services. Only 20 feet under the roadway are the main sewers of the West End, one running west to east and out to Barking in Essex, another north to south of the river. These sewers are inspected from entrances in the circus itself. While work goes on, in and around and under the circus, by midday, especially on a warm day, those who haven't anything in particular to do take up their position around Eros. On this spot, as though being at the very centre of a whirling wheel, people seem to be able to relax. They come here and just sit. Some eat their lunch, others sleep. For a time, they've got off the wheel.
but there's no getting off the wheel for the flower sellers or for the men who maintain other services at this crossroads of London. Not one in a thousand visitors to Piccadilly knows that under his feet is a subway which carries post office cables, electricity, gas, water and other piped services throughout central London. The subway is 12 feet in diameter and was built nearly 80 years ago. The Greater London Council's pipe subway staff are responsible for the subway itself and engineers of the service companies maintain their own equipment in the tunnels. As the normal working day draws to a close, the rush hour of Piccadilly Circus builds up again. Pressure on the underground station is in reverse now, with 17,000 people trying to get on trains every hour. Thousands are trying to buy tickets now, rather than get rid of them. The escalators, groaning with the weight of tons of tired humans homeward bound, are nearly all going downhill at this hour. Follow the lights. Follow the lights. The lights will take you to your train, and the trains will take you home. On each of the four lines of Piccadilly Station during the rush hour, a train arrives every two minutes. It has to be well on its way to the next station before the next train is due in. If anything upset this minute-by-minute -minute schedule, there would be chaos. Strangers, who may think the normal rush hour of Piccadilly Station is chaos anyway, there's plenty of help at hand. You can even see what time it is in Tokyo, if you want to know. Almost before the working day rush away from Piccadilly Circus has finished, there's another rush back for an evening on the town. Restaurants, cafes, pubs, cinemas and theatres are now manned by other people who earn their bread in and around the circus. The steps around Eros attract the night birds. The lights are on and the wheel is gathering speed again. Everyone wants to remember Piccadilly Circus. Everything is photographed day and night. But will there be the same affection for Piccadilly when it changes? Or will it be, goodbye, Piccadilly?